Lab reports are a huge part of college, especially in engineering and various science majors that have labs. I can't speak for all schools, but you will likely have a lot of lab reports, and in this video I'll discuss what was expected of me as an engineer in terms of lab reports, as well as why we do lab reports, where I'll discuss briefly what I went through in my first job as an engineer, which you may not expect. So let's get into it. Now almost every major class I took came with a lab. Not everyone, but most engineering classes came with one. There was always a lecture portion that was typically three days per week, and the lab portion that was one day per week. But I was on a quarter system rather than semester, so this will differ for everyone. The lab was based on the lecture, of course, but it was its own class with its own grade on your transcript, and often for me at least, I had a different teacher for my lecture versus my lab. Frequently, grad students taught labs. In probably 90% of my lab classes, they consisted of one lab per week and it was always a different lab, rather than an ongoing project that we built on, which meant we were required to do one lab report per week that we had the full week to work on and then we turned it in the day of the next lab. And by the way, this meant I did around 100 lab reports during my college career, so yes, there's a lot of them. So here's what a lab report typically consisted of for me. They were around 5-10 to 10 pages, but some were longer. One of those was a title page, and then some teachers required a table of contents, but not all of them did. The first real part of the lab was often an introduction, or purpose, or objective, or whatever your teacher called it, where you would simply summarize the lab and why you're doing it in around one paragraph. Next was a procedure section, which typically took up at least one page. However, that was because you had to write a list of all the equipment you used, then you had to write out the steps you had to do to carry out the lab, which included pictures, schematics of circuits I had to set up, and things like that. This was an actual schematic I had to do for a lab report my final year. If 5-10 to 10 pages sounds like a lot by the way, remember lab reports are filled with graphs, charts, tables, and more, which take up a lot of the physical space. Then came experimental data, and this was normally the longest part. This is where you put plots, tables, charts, and more of all the values that you gathered. Like I would have to plot voltages, currents, and more from many different resistors or circuits. Then under each plot I would have to write a quick caption like magnitude and phase of analog frequency response of some specific circuit, which is not what you see on the right by the way. But some teachers required longer explanations of each image that were closer to a paragraph. We'd also have to do a lot of tables, which was required in nearly every report. Then often we needed to include screen captures of the equipment we were using to show the kind of responses we were getting for a certain circuit. As you can guess, especially with the tables and Excel plots, formatting, titling your axes, and all that stuff did take a while, especially when you had to do a lot of them. And yes, everything you're seeing was taken from reports I still have copies of. Then the second to last part of the lab I'll put as questions. Sometimes this was just a part of the sections above, but sometimes it was on its own, and this is where you had to answer questions the teacher assigned with the lab. Like, explain what the slope in this plot represents, or what are two reasons for error in your final measurement, and so on. Some labs had very few questions and others had a lot. Sometimes you even had to do calculations in the final report and show your work to show that what you got was correct. And then last came the conclusion, which was really only a paragraph, but this was usually the only part of the lab reports that everyone in the group had to do. What I mean by that is every lab I did was in a group of either two people, but normally three. I didn't really ever do a lab by myself, and I was never in a group of four or more. So as a group, we turned in one lab report per week, which means we got to split up all the work I previously discussed. But we usually had to write our own conclusions that would have been graded separately, which means our final grade could have been slightly different from each other, even though it was just one report for the group. And as you can guess, this was just generally what I experienced, but every lab was slightly different, so don't expect this exact format for every lab report you ever do. When it came to grading, it was sometimes tough because for me the lab reports made up like 70% of our grade for the lab class. The other 30% would come from pre-labs and usually some final written exam. And if your experience is anything like mine, you'll have all types of lab professors. You'll have the professor who gives you an 85% for just turning in the lab report with everything pretty much complete and your names on it, all the way to the professor who takes off 30% for using the wrong verb tense one time. Yes, that's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. I've had those professors where the lab reports were basically passed back, covered in red ink, and getting a B was unheard of. But labs were almost always one unit, rather than my lectures which were three units. So your lecture had three times more impact on your GPA than your lab portion did. Now why do we do lab reports? Is it just to prove we understand the lab? Well maybe, but you will likely be writing technical documents as an engineer when you go into your career. Again, I can't speak for everyone, but I had to do a lot of this in my first job. 
At my job, when I wrote a program for hardware testing purposes, for example, I had to write a document detailing what the program did, how it worked, I had to give examples of how to run it with proper parameters, and so on. I had to show figures, put captions, and more just like a lab report. Then I had to present that to my boss and a few other coworkers, and they would look it over and tell me to fix things like maybe some paragraphs should be more clear, or add in a schematic rather than a worded explanation. And it was essentially just graded like a lab report, except rather than an A or B, it was just approved or I had to make revisions. Where it being approved meant it would go into the company's database, which is where it would remain so future employees can access it when they needed to use the program. Same thing for when we had to implement some new testing procedure or use new equipment and so on. Everything had to be documented. And this was a surprise to me. You might imagine engineering like you see in the movies where they're just working with their hands in some lab and designing the next computer or car or whatever it may be. And engineering obviously can involve stuff like that. But there's more to it and writing technical documents is one of those things you don't exactly envision. And I'm just about to end this, but I did attach some links in the description below to old lab reports of mine if you would like to see some more examples. They're of course technical, so if you are maybe in high school or simply not in electrical engineering, of course don't worry about knowing it, but hopefully it just gives you a better idea for what you can maybe expect. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.